One of the things I find most interesting as a philosopher is how different systems of thought, different worldviews, even religions, seek to use science to kind of explain or even defend their worldview. Well, one of the areas that Eastern mystical religions appeal to is the area of quantum mechanics, which can seem rather strange. We've asked Dr. Erica Carlson to join us, to talk with us a little bit about this question. Erica, I often hear people uh, on the web watching a video or in debates where maybe somebody who is coming from a Hindu point of view, an Eastern mystical view, will say that somehow quantum mechanics kind of justifies or grounds their worldview. How would you respond to something like that? Well, I need to hear from them a little bit more specifically about how they think it's justifying it. So perhaps one of the, the ways in which they uh, want to do that is to say that you can meditate and create a better world. Is that kind of where you're yeah, headed? Yeah, the kind of creation <laughs> of create your own reality okay. kind of thing is common yeah. brought up. Okay, all right. Or if I meditate hard enough on something, it didn't happen or it didn't matter, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so we do have a phrase in quantum mechanics called observer determines reality. Right. And I think we all wish that no one had ever written it down quite that way. Um, what that phrase means in physics is a highly technical phrase. And then when you take that phrase out of its context and read observer determines reality, and you just apply the colloquial meaning to that, it doesn't, it's not the same. So let me see if I can give you an example of what observer determines reality means in quantum mechanics. So there are certain uh, quantum mechanical properties that uh, don't actually have to exist sharply all the time. A lot of it goes back to the wave nature, as we were discussing before. Really, when you're talking about quantum mechanics, you're discussing things on very tiny link scales. Right. Then it becomes apparent that all the things around us actually have a wave nature to them. And so a lot of times, these, these things resolve themselves just in thinking about the waves. So one of the um, dichotomies we see in quantum physics is that the more we know about the position of a particle, the less we know about its uh, momentum. And if momentum's unfamiliar, you can just think in terms of uh, speed or velocity, that sort of thing. Now, this actually is a property of all waves. Okay. It, it's not stuck to quantum mechanical waves. So um, think about water waves, okay? And think about how they move along. Right. So if I think of a particular wave on, uh, we were just, uh, my family was just at the beach yesterday. Uh, the, uh, we were looking at ocean waves, right? And so out in, in the deep ocean, if you think about the speed at which waves pass you, or maybe you've been on a lake and watched it, or, or on a river and watched it, the, the waves that have a long wavelength move at a different speed from the waves that have the short wavelength. Mm -hmm. So do you remember, I mean, can you, can you just kind right. of picture this in your mind? Wh yeah. Who's going to travel faster, the wave that's got the long wavelength, the short wavelength on the, on the surface of water? If you have a really long wavelength wave, it can go by pretty darn quick, whereas the little tiny ripples are traveling um, more slowly. So that gives you an idea of how the shape of a wave can be connected to its momentum or to its speed, right? Now, when you think then about those waves that I just described to you are, are, are um, you know, waves that are moving along. Where is that wave when it's doing that? It's actually in a lot of places at once, yeah. right? In order for me to make the statement that I'm thinking about a long wavelength wave, that means that it's distributed. It doesn't have a well-defined position. This doesn't bother us at all with water waves because you see it all the time. So having a well-defined speed is contrary to having a well-defined position. It's actually just a property of waves in general. Um, and so when it comes into quantum mechanics, the way that this played out in, in the early quantum literature is that uh, the phrase got written down, observer determines reality, meaning if the, um, per, if the measurement, uh, let, me, let me clarify what observer means first. In the quantum literature, observer has nothing to do with consciousness. We really mean measurement device. So you could think of some inanimate object that's going to measure this thing for you. So measurement device. Um, when you choose to measure speed, ver or, or it's really momentum, but think of it as speed if you don't like momentum, um, versus choosing to measure position, um, if you're choosing to measure speed, you're really looking at these things that are long extended objects going by like big water waves. They don't have a well-defined position. Doesn't bother you with water waves. The same thing happens with quantum waves. And so in a sense, the measurement device 
um, is going to uh, pick out the property it was asked to measure, right? The experimenter makes a choice. I right. want to know the speed of this thing. Then it's going to go in and look at these long waves that, that are traveling and have, have a speed. But if you wanted to ask exactly where is the thing, then you, you're um, asking different types of questions. You're going to set up a different measurement device. And that measurement device will now be tuned into, typically, if you're asking where is the thing, you're, you're tuned into a different component of this wave particle thing. I'm going to call it a wave particle thing because <laughs> small objects have characteristics of particles and waves at the same time. We don't really have good language for it. It's not intuitive. The only reason it's not intuitive is because we're not very small. Okay. So when you're asking a position question in quantum mechanics, you're typically now setting up an experiment that's designed to catch the particle in its particle character on, say, a screen or something like that, and you'll see a little bright spot where it hits the screen. So you've set things up in such a way that you're only looking for position, okay? So that is the sense in which observer determines reality okay. plays out in experiments in quantum mechanics. The way you set up your measurements um, has a lot to do with what types of answers you get back. Doesn't at all mean we're controlling things, right? We're not, um, we're not controlling things. We're just measuring what happens. And in fact, we find in the quantum world, a lot of things appear to be driven by probabilities to the, to the best that we can measure them. They seem to be uh, undergoing true probabilistic events. Um, and so uh, we don't have control. We certainly can't use this idea that observer determines reality uh, to mean that we can control stuff. We can't. So when it comes to the mystical claims, yeah. quantum mechanics is not saying that magic is going on. There's the challenge of how small it is right. and the challenge of how to measure. Right. Would, that, would that be the way of thinking about it? Absolutely. I think that's a great way to think about it. Yeah, you've, you've said it very well.